Podcateers. I feel like I'm going to need to apologize in advance. Oh, no. Because I I have a fan on in front of me because it is ridiculously hot in here. For some odd reason, I'm like steaming up my glasses. Oh, for Clint. I don't know what's happened. Yeah, I'm <laughs> for Clint, exactly. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what's happening. I just know that I feel really warm. I'm, I'm sweating. And can I take my hat off to help the heat? Possibly. But it would also reveal the Chia Pet head <laughs> and the hat head associated with wearing the hat for the last hour to two hours. Cha 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 chia. So that's not an <laughs> option at this point. Ha 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 hazen. So at this point, I may have to like take my glasses off or like just open them up a little bit so that the airflow gets inside when I can't see anymore. You need Whatever like one takes. of those. You need like yeah. a like a like a. <sighs> Fan, like a hand. Oh, fan. maybe, maybe. You know what's funny though? I technically, I guess technically, if you or Meller are speaking, I can mute myself uh -huh. because mm -hmm. then I can, like, I have something covering the fan so that it kind of is, yeah, like there's airflow this way, but obviously there isn't enough. And I have it like on the the one setting so that you don't pick it up on the microphone. Because anyone out there that has edited audio before understands what a pain in the butt it is yeah. to remove stuff like that. In some cases, it's easy. And in some cases, it will take you hours of remastering. <laughs> and it is not fun at times. So I want to find like this middle ground because we're going into the summer. Mm -hmm. Right? Mel brought up like I need to figure something out because it's like summer is very rapidly approaching mm -hmm. and I don't know if I'm going to be able to handle it in this room this summer so I gotta figure something out bucket uh, of ice and stick your feet in uh... not not out of the question at this point <laughs> like I'm Get a honestly uh, honestly if I did that knowing how hot this room can get mm -hmm. it would last a good 20 minutes maybe and then it would start to just get warm. Uh, here in the we go. Bucket. I figured it out. Okay, mini fridge full of water and ice. You plug that sucker in, leave the door open. There you go. Done that. Done that. I'm not against it. I like the bucket thing though. Bucket of ice. Stick your feet yeah. in. Your little toesies. Yeah. Even styrofoam. Do they tub? Cut it. Oh, that's not. Low? That's not a bad idea. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Big giant uh, hydro flask. Stanley cups. Stick your feet. You know, Stanley the ice doesn't <laughs> melt. Big solo cups. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you need the double wall insulation. The insulated. Yeah. <laughs> That's get funny. that uh, Big get the igloo cooler. Yeti cooler yeah. and cut two holes in. Stick your feet in. There you oh. go. Double That's, wall vacuum hmm. insulation. DIY. There you go. You know what's funny? It's probably cheaper than getting one of those Dyson fans, the the ones probably. that don't make any noise. Probably. It's probably cheaper to do that. Uh, whew. So, yeah, you're going to have to bear with me today because that's it's okay. Gonna, yeah. So what a weekend for me. Uh, I know, Mel, you had some exciting uh, sights. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to talk about what, what you had a chance to see. I thought that was super cool. Um, um, but yeah, we're, we're going to be talking about that. We're going to talk about my weekend. Talked a little bit about it last week. I'll try to keep it brief. I'm going to talk about WrestleMania because, yes, it happened this uh, past weekend. <laughs> we'll be talking about the, the cool new stuff at Galaxy's Edge, uh, a new YouTube series by WDI, and the big news that's been floating around, which was a rumor, kind of confirmed, and all that stuff about the DAS system the dis the disability access service at walt disney world and disneyland uh it's going to be having some really big changes very soon actually so uh all that is coming up in this episode but before i jump into my wrestlemania thing mel uh tell us what you had a chance to see and what the experience was like <laughs> sure um one sorry i didn't mean to like kind of interrupt in your so intro. excited I, oh no yes. i was just excited we got so much cool stuff to talk about this week um 
so Saturday, I actually found out about what twenty five minutes or so before the launch. Um, mm -hmm. So SpaceX had their rocket launch, and I I've never had a chance to actually see it. I've seen mm -hmm. it through pictures on Instagram. You know, everybody posts it, and it's like I always miss it. I always do, but this time I was like, I finally got word of it, and I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, northeast. I got a clear shot. I got a clear view, especially in my area. Um, we have a parking structure that goes really, really up, really high. And I was kind of like a kid because I was listening <laughs> to like the information and just being like, just listening to see if anything were to happen or whatever. And um, so I asked Jerry, I'm like, hey, let's have, do you want to see this with me? I go, I've never seen it before. So he was able, he's seen it before, but he was able to show me like, what things like what little things happen mm -hmm. um like when i try to look for it <laughs> it was during the sunset and i was trying yeah. to pinpoint where everything was because i don't know if there was a small cloud next to it and i was like i'm like that's a cloud what where where's the starting point and then poof i just see it and it just comes up keeps going and i'm like this is so cool like you know you just you, I, I don't know i just turned into a kid in that moment i was mm -hmm. like this is awesome and i'm still listening um on my phone to the nasa you know they're no actually no through spacex i believe i was mm -hmm. listening to it but anyways so as i'm watching it and listening to it and it, like it was just so clear that i was able to see like the little dots just poof like pop off that's awesome <laughs> so it was like you're watching it and then you see the first detachment and then it keeps going and then it just it's it was so cool because it was the first time i saw something that went i don't know i don't know how to describe it it just it just looked like magic to me because it was just a cool experience and stuff so um i did take video of course i was like so into it and whatnot i <laughs> forgot for a moment that i was recording so some of my video is like up and then it's like oops <laughs> come back down <laughs> um, that's funny but yeah it was really really cool like it was perfect to just be up there nobody was up there it was just us two it was cool that's cool that yeah. is awesome yeah one of my like items that i would love to see in person is just any rocket launch and i don't mean like from afar like seeing it from afar i think is cool i've never done that either mm -hmm. so the fact that you got a chance to see it even from afar already like something that's on my list right but being at the location when the rocket is going up and seeing all the smoke and everything like it's something i've always wanted to do mm -hmm. um seeing a shuttle up close I got an opportunity to do that years ago when they were moving Endeavor oh, through the yeah. streets of LA oh, to yeah. take it to the Science Museum. Uh, they did it a block away from where we were working at the time. This is really close to Randy's Donuts. So anybody <laughs> that knows the Los Angeles area <laughs> has watched Iron Man, Scarf Down Donuts. That is the location that Endeavor was dragged through mm -hmm. uh, across the 405 freeway. And uh, we were working right down the street from that area, and it was such a cool site. They were filming, I think, uh, it, it actually lasted longer there because they were filming a Toyota commercial for the Super Bowl. Oh. I think oh. that evening uh, where, the, the, where the Tundra, I think, was supposed to drag it as part of the commercial. Anyway like the fact that you got to see this live and and here's the, like the the detail that you said that you got to see like the little <laughs> like the things fall off and you got to see the like the 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 ah it's just so cool <laughs> i love it so cool andrew have you ever seen a rocket launch i don't think i have you know other than uh you know the astro orbiter uh i have not <laughs> seen any kind of rocket launch or one of those like you know you stomp on it and it shoots in the air oh, i had a model cool. rocket as a kid where you put the little rocket engine in and you light it and it whoosh, and the parachute oh um, i've seen those before those are cool yeah mm -hmm. but not nothing nothing uh you know professional um could, 
Could you reuse those rockets? Or so was you could, it like a one-time deal? You could reuse the rocket. You just had to put a new engine in it. So it was just base. I mean, the rocket, at least the ones I had, was just like a cardboard tube with a plastic cone on the top and a plastic, like, uh, the fins. And then you would, like, take it apart and you'd put the engine in which is like the gunpowder basically or whatever so it is it's basically a low-grade firework exactly mm-hmm. and then the Got like it. Okay, the, okay. the nose part had a parachute in it and so it went you know shoot up and then the parachute would somehow come out i don't know how it would come out and it would fall to the ground somewhere in magic. the vicinity, hopefully not in like somebody's backyard. Backyard, you always have to do it in like a huge field or something to not lose your rocket. That's super cool. I love it. Hey, I see. I see that your the shirt that you're wearing. Is that you on that shirt? This is not me. No, this is uh, John Rhys Davies. This is Sala, actual Sala, not me, Sala. That's uh, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna get a shirt where I need you to pose like that, so I can put you on a shirt and wear oh, you yeah, on boy. a shirt. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we have a picture of that somewhere. We have I can a send it to you. <laughs> my my fit is different. I'm I'm rocking this one today. It says "Foolish Mortal." If you're just listening, yeah. Oh yeah, sorry if you're listening. It's a... <laughs> right. My shirt is a getting... picture of Sala from the attraction. <laughs> and we... I keep forgetting that. Then we have like the whole death thing. So yeah, Melissa's that. got yeah the Coco shirt. Yes, <laughs> love it. Did any of both, you guys? By the way, yeah, oh, by ahead. the way, before you jump into that, Andrew, both the foolish mortal shirt that I'm wearing and the papel picado shirt that Mel are wearing, both available at podcasters.com slash gear. Yeah. If you're interested in owning one for yourself, uh, through the magic of editing, I'm gonna put it up on screen right now, <laughs> so you can see it. <laughs> you can see the like... shirt, <laughs> and you can see podcasters.com slash gear. And uh, here's the foolish mortal shirt in case you're also interested both are available through the magic of editing and through your orders on podcasters.com slash gear back to us <laughs> i hope it's on this side <laughs> i think i'm probably just going to add the entire square like the quotes or something oh mm-hmm. so, so me just moving probably... <laughs> flaring my hands all around i'm doing this behind the thing and nobody you, can see it do you want me to edit so no, that we're on the okay. side for it's that it's okay you could do whatever you so... want it's okay i think that should be a real <laughs> <laughs> yeah it like would a be blooper. funny <laughs> yeah i i have to say i'm having uh, some fun finding ways to fit i mean because obviously the episode is you know 16 by 9 it's widescreen for youtube Mm -hmm. but figuring out a way to fit some of the elements for an instagram reel have Mm -hmm. been uh an interesting thing as we kind of step more into the video world and everything uh so far i've liked the couple of different ways that we've you know, had like the format of them. Uh, this last week, uh, I finally went to a more like rectangular cut for us because we had like the cool hexagons and it was kind of like a hidden Mickey and everything. So the people that caught on to that, like, you did it because yes, it was a hidden <laughs> Mickey. But uh, it does take up an additional real estate that we could use, especially now that I'm trying to get into adding more captions to the videos. Mm-hmm. So uh yeah it's all experimenting and getting comfortable with it so for everybody that's been watching the reels and joining us on youtube you know we appreciate it thank you so much tell your friends share it let people know that you get to see this mm-hmm. yeah on and camera. you ring the battle bell and you smash the thing and you click the thing for the notifications and the whatever i don't know nailed it right and make we new did friends it. We did it! <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Smash it and click it and ding Smash it and, like. and and check the box and what I don't know. <laughs> my my uh kids laugh. Or they used to laugh. I haven't done it in a really long time because uh I would joke whenever I was recording a video. There's um there's a lot of YouTubers that I really admire. One of them is a photographer uh that I briefly met a long, long time ago. Um, he's also a magician, but he's gone on to do some amazing things as a photographer. His name is Peter McKinnon. And 
whenever he starts a video, he's like, what's up everybody? Peter McKinnon here. Welcome back. <laughs> and it's, it's always the what? Yeah. Like with the B, the whole like, yeah. what's up emphasis. And uh, my kids used to laugh so hard whenever we would do that. Even when we were playing around, supposedly recording our own videos, <laughs> like in the living room. Mm -hmm. And they're like, dad, you have to start it like that. I was like, I can't. That's like gimmick <laughs> infringement. I can't like steal the guy's bit. Like that's, that's his thing, right? Yeah. Right. It's like, it's bad enough. Like every one of us wanted to edit like Casey Neistat when we were doing Disney vlogs at like the peak of Disney vlogging. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you know, I, I thought I, I made a couple that, that were good enough to to meet the criteria. Well, they didn't get the views that Casey's videos got, but yeah, I did a good job. I'm, I'll give myself the credit. Well, I don't know who this Casey person is, but I know who Hazen is, so good for you. Same. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, let's see. Did any of you guys, now, you know, now that we're past it, did any of you guys go stare at the sun the other day? With glasses? Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, did you? No, I forgot. And I was at no. work. <laughs> it's oh, okay. No. I saw the one in 2017, which was a better, like better for where I'm up here in NorCal. Yeah. It was, okay. I think, a little better because we were, I, I would have got like little tiny line, I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah. Pretty much what happened this time around. I, so the... The eclipse fever, I think, grew over the past two weeks, right? Yeah. And mm -hmm. as it got closer, there was conspiracy theories and stories about the Appalachian Mount, the yeah Appalachian Mountains, especially considering that the entire East Coast had an earthquake, like a it was like 5. somewhere 0, like, like Pennsylvania 4. 8 or something, or something. Like, yeah, yeah. like New, New Jersey felt it. I was like, and the epicenter was in the Appalachian Mountains, right? And mm -hmm. so they're like. Uh, like people were saying that the route of the eclipse coincided with it and that giants were going to awaken. Nice. I personally was hoping that I was going to get superpowers from the eclipse because, <laughs> you know, save the cheerleader, save the world. But it didn't happen like that. I didn't get anything. Uh, I was pretty upset. However, uh, because we couldn't get the glasses to view the eclipse directly, I fell back on this old trick that i learned back in elementary school where you take like a cereal box mm -hmm. you you basically a camera obscura right like mm -hmm. you right. create a couple of holes in it you add a little pinhole on one side and it projects the eclipse onto the other end of the box so my boys and i got together we created a couple of those and they went outside and we were like looking at the eclipse so what you were talking about uh, about andrew was true we saw the circle but then there was like a little tiny sliver at the top yeah which we could see here in uh, on the west coast but either way it was still a, a fun project yeah it was a cool way to see the eclipse without the glasses still um still sad i got no superpowers would have been nice <laughs> it would have been a nice change actually <laughs> after the last few years superpowers would have been kind of sweet actually well, but maybe yeah, they you know. just take some time to like to no, discover i've watched to tv shows where they just kind of happen <laughs> maybe like, it's maybe it's something that you don't know like maybe you just have like super like hair growing ability and it's just, i already like, had that slow. oh yeah okay i already had that it's like sasquatch man <laughs> <laughs> like i had that before the eclipse so maybe i got it in 2017 Ooh, maybe Ooh, that's what i got super go. back pain that's what it is my superpower is back pain <laughs> oh um, yeah <laughs> so i got tons of that one of the coolest things that i don't think i've ever experienced was so being outside yeah, we got to see it, but mm -hmm. it was warm or it was already getting warm. And when the eclipse was happening, it just got cooler, just mm -hmm. slightly cooler. Nice. And I was like, this is cool. I had one of the students telling me, like, it's really cold, it's really cold. And I'm like, well, I explained what happened. And I'm like, in my, in, to myself, I'm like, this is cool because I don't think I've experienced that because I think the last one was i don't remember where it was like where totality was um mm -hmm. i don't remember but, but i think it, oh, totality in 2017 it went from like the northwest so it went like down oregon and like kind of swooped through the yeah uh, see i don't remember that so 
I I looked it up the other the, when it was happened the other one because I remember uh -huh. watching the other one we had the glasses for it uh, for the last one but yeah um, oh I know where I was huh <laughs> Disneyland yeah <laughs> <laughs> nice I was I was sitting down we had glasses yeah yeah wow <laughs> that's cool that's a good place to see it. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's been. Wasn't there a lunar eclipse also recently that people were photographing? Uh, yeah, I believe mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I remember. I remember one of my favorite things Pink to one. photograph. Pink yeah, yeah, I remember one of my favorite things to photograph was sitting in Fantasyland um, near the Storybook Canals and mm -hmm. photographing the Matterhorn when the moon was right above it. Yeah, and just like bracketing shots to try to get like a really nice moonshot right over the Matterhorn. Mm -hmm. And uh, if there's anything I miss, is definitely uh, photographing in the parks. Like I, I doing that every weekend and not doing it anymore has just been like, ugh, what yeah. it? <laughs> that it hurts, man, on on so many levels. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Oh, ah. WrestleMania. Oh, WrestleMania. Are you ready? I listen. You're Were joking, you but that's how it started. I was not ready. It. I was a. It was a roller coaster, man. I was a wreck at the end. I was booing and everything. Crying. I. I was a Cody crybaby. Damn it! Aww. I don't care what the Rock called us. I was a Cody crybaby. So, I want to. I want to try to give you the Cliff Notes version because. This is it. The reason I'm bringing it up, and I, I know that people listening are like, "Well, this isn't Disney." It, listen, the entire story that was laid out for this WrestleMania was so Avengers Endgame. <laughs> it was, it wasn't even funny how close it was, right? So, here, here's here's what I'll say. Last week, I believe we talked a little bit about how they were entering this like new era because they got a Netflix deal. There's a little bit more cursing. The rock is dropping F bombs and mm -hmm. he's saying things that like in like this year, like this time would not be acceptable. Right. Mm -hmm. But I, like his character is full blown heel. He calls himself the final boss. The thing is that this story of uh, Cody Rhodes, he's the son of the American dream, Dusty Rhodes, right? An old school wrestler used to fight with Hogan and all these other guys in the eighties and stuff. He never won the WWE championship at the time, the WWF championship. Mm -hmm. And so he passed away several years ago <clears throat> and Cody used to wrestle in the WWE. Uh, but he was always given these horrible gimmicks. And so people that may have watched in the 90s, early 2000s, may remember a character named Goldust, mm. right? This real flamboyant mm -hmm. guy with, like, gold clothing painted gold and black. Goldust was Dustin Runnels, Cody's big brother, also the son of Dusty Rhodes. Mm -hmm. And when they couldn't find something for Cody to do, they put him in a similar getup and they called him Stardust. <laughs> and Cody oh. committed like to his credit Cody went all in on this but he realized over time that he was never going to get anywhere there so he quit he went off on the independent scene he mm -hmm. built himself up into this amazing character this amazing wrestler that he called the American Nightmare as an homage to his dad being the American Dream oh, okay so if you've ever seen my water bottle there's like a skull with a crown and like the wings that's the nightmare family logo uh it's the thing cody rhodes has tattooed on the side of his neck for those that have possibly seen his picture either way um you know he went off into the independence he created a brand new wrestling company in 2017 i believe that rivaled the world wrestling entertainment company because they were much grittier they were mm. much more adult and at mm. the time vince mcmahon was stuck in this like he called it pg era but it was more like g era okay. and it was really corny at times it was like really mm. geared to children because they wanted to make those advertising dollars with children Toys. And so exactly and so in the 80s it like watching wrestling was 
looked down upon by a lot of people. Like, Mm -hmm. if there's been one constant outside of Disney, it's been wrestling for me. Because it was much more easy for me to consume wrestling because it was on network television. I didn't need cable to watch it or anything. It, It came on three times a week. Uh, my neighbors had a big satellite dish where when the pay-per-views would come on, they would invite us over to watch it and stuff. So I've been watching wrestling since the mid eighties. Right. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so fast forward, Cody goes off, he starts his own company and they're much, they're much more adult. It's what people now would have considered like the attitude era with stone cold and the rock and triple H like, you know, so this storyline that's that's um playing out right now or that basically culminated this past weekend started in 2019 okay because that's kind of the end of when vince was like really pushing the character of roman reigns but it, it just wouldn't click people didn't like him they hated him they hated the fact that vince was pushing him and then the pandemic began So then they were inside of a room with a bunch of TV screens that they called the Thunderdome. So they were never in front of people. Uh Right. And in this time when the Thunder, like the Thunderdome saga of, of wrestling began is when Roman Reigns came back, but he came back as what he called the tribal chief. He basically came back as this really arrogant, egotistical character that was doing, he said it was everything for his family. And in short, his lineage is like generations deep like the wild samoans in the 80s where his family rocky johnson was the rock the rock roman reigns uh yokozuna uh like all these characters from the last like four decades are all family Mm -hmm. and they a lot of them wrestled so there's like 70 people in this family that wrestle oh right Mm -hmm. And so uh, Roman Reigns comes back at the tribal chief. He obliterates Bray Wyatt, the, the, the character of the fiend that I really liked. He passed away last year after complications uh, with his heart after he caught COVID. Um, He, like he was the fiend and Roman destroyed him on a pay-per-view, right? Jeez. So mm-hmm. that was the beginning of the tribal chief. Mm-hmm. And I'm trying to hurry. I know but I know a lot of people don't want to hear this, so I'm trying I'm trying to hurry. Yeah, get so to the part with the here's... chairs. Okay, okay. Oh, it's coming. <laughs> don't you worry. Okay. So before all of this, right? right? 10 years ago, 2014 happens. Roman Reigns is teamed up with two other guys, Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose in a a faction called The Shield. And The Shield was super popular, super duper popular. And at one point, Seth Rollins wanted to go off on his own and become his own wrestler. So he betrayed Roman Reigns by hitting him with a chair in the back, ah, turning, chairs. Chairs. like beating him I with a chair, chairs. and basically going off on his own, okay. right? Okay, so fast forward, him and Roman have beef this entire time. The other guy, Dean Ambrose, goes off to this other company that's much more adult. And, like, he goes by John Moxley now, and people love him because he's, like, deathmatch guy, and he's always bleeding and stuff and whatever. <laughs> so the, the the tribal chief wins the title when he comes back, right? Mm-hmm. And in this modern era... Title changes happen so frequently that they're almost meaningless. Like, John Cena's like a 16-time champion. But, you know, you had to lose it 15 times to be a 16-time champion, right? Yeah, exactly. Roman yeah. Reigns consistently held the belt for almost 1,400 days. Okay? From the, from the time he won it oh. until this past Sunday, almost 1,400 days as champion. And that's unheard of. Wow. because. People's attention span is like, we need a new champion. But this tribal chief gimmick, the bloodline gimmick, um, the, his cousins, the Usos, jumping in and becoming a part of this plan, it was insane. He brought in a character named Sami Zayn, who he used to get what he wanted, and then he betrayed him, and they beat him up and everything. All right, Jeez. so here's where it becomes Avengers Endgame, right? Okay. Right. So Sami Zayn goes off. His cousin Jimmy, or oh, I'm sorry, Jay, one of the one of the twins that was part of the bloodline, leaves the faction because like he was treated like crap. So his cousin is now out, Sammy is now out, and uh Cody comes back to the company as the American Nightmare. Yes, take notes, because there's gonna be a quiz at the end. 
Uh, <laughs> he comes back. He comes back as the American Nightmare, and uh, just takes the world by storm. His first uh, opponent was Seth Rollins, former tag team partner of Roman Reigns. Beats him up at WrestleMania. They have two more matches. One of them is super famous because Cody tore his pec. And in the entire match, oh. all of this was purple. And he fought with a torn pec through the entire match. And it's like super famous now because of how bad the injury was. All right. So they develop respect for each other. They don't like each other, but they respect each other because they've battled each other. Blah, blah, blah. Fast forward a couple years. Cody said he wanted to finish his story. That's how he dubbed coming back to win the title that his dad never won, to hand it to his mom and say, here's the belt that dad could never win. Oh, gee. Last year, he wins oh. the Royal Rumble, which is a guaranteed title shot at WrestleMania. I'm so glad Andrew's taking notes. Goes to WrestleMania, comes super close, and loses to Roman Reigns. Why? Because the bloodline interfered in every Roman match. And so when people thought he was going to win, they swerved everyone and he lost. So he spent the last year on this redemption arc saying that he's going to find a way back to WrestleMania to beat Roman Reigns. Wins the Royal Rumble again. But by now, the bloodline and Roman Reigns have obliterated everyone that they've seen all the other wrestlers in the locker room, right? They've all been beaten up by the bloodline. And so everybody hates them, especially Sammy, who was once a part of the bloodline and got kicked out. Jey Uso, the cousin of Roman Reigns, who got beat up and got kicked out of the bloodline. And so now they're friends with Cody. So Cody is getting ready to face Roman Reigns at, uh, at this year's WrestleMania, and The Rock comes back. Also oh, I know cousin him. of Roman Reigns. The and he says, hey, Rock. Cody, look, I know you earned the right to face my cousin at WrestleMania. But this is a bigger match, The Rock versus Roman Reigns. So we're going to need you to step down. Here's the kicker. If it was a wrestler, that's like, you're crazy, dude. I'm not going to do that. What threw the story for a loop is that mm -hmm. The Rock, when uh, Vince McMahon was sold the company the wwe he sold it mm -hmm. to ari emmanuel last year the owner of um of uh the ufc he created a company called tko holdings who is now the owner of the ufc and the wwe and the rock is now a board member of tko so basically he's the boss of all these wrestlers so he basically, mm. as the boss, came in and said, listen, as your boss, I'm telling you to step down. I'm going to take this match, even though you earned it. That pissed people off. Yeah. So now people are angry, right? Because Cody earned this. And so the Rock started calling them Cody crybabies and started cursing up a storm oh, on social drama. media. And it was, as the kids say, cinema, right? Like the back and forth between these characters was absolute cinema. We get to uh, WrestleMania finally, right? Mm -hmm. And so weeks before, as they're setting up this match, Sammy tells Cody, listen, I'm there for you, whatever you need. He never came. It was like whatever. But Seth uh. Rollins, former brother of Roman Reigns in the Shield, says, listen, uh, I, want, I want to see you take down the bloodline. And there's only one person that's uh, suited to be your shield. And people lost it, right? Because he mentioned the shield. And the shield was super cool because they were dressed in tactical vests all in black and they had like Whoa. like a call sign and they would come down through the through the audience to the ring and it was crazy. So anyway, so Cody agrees to get help from Seth. So they fight on Saturday. They fought two days in a row. On Saturday, they were supposed to. I know people are bored. I'm almost done. Just hang in there just a little we're still longer. Listen. I'm still listening. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I know, know. But other people <laughs> listening are like, what's happening? What is he talking about? This is not <laughs> Disney related. Hang in there. I'm almost done. Andrew's <laughs> running out of notepad paper. Trust me, I'm almost done. <laughs> so, Saturday, they fight. They have a tag team match. If Cody and Seth win on night two, Cody gets to fight Roman fair and square, no interference. But if they lose, they fight under bloodline rules, which me which means no disqualification. Anything goes right. Seth Rollins, okay, comes in on Saturday, helps Cody, but they lose. Oh. 
Oh. Now there's a disadvantage oh. the next day. Sunday, <laughs> Seth Rollins fights for his world title, loses his title because he was so beat up from the night before. Cody has his title match and in the middle of the title match everybody's like coming down to help like Roman's beating up Cody Cody's beating up Roman and at one point one of the cousins comes in beats up Cody and we thought Cody was gonna lose again he kicks out all of a sudden John Cena comes out <laughs> right could you Who see him who, I, I did I see know. him. Okay. I did see him. He was not invisible. John Cena comes out. He attacks Solo, which is the cousin of Roman, because Solo beat up Cena so bad months ago that he had to supposedly go away and heal. Right? So now Cena's fighting Solo. He gets him out of the way. Then the other cousin comes in, jumps in, and the brother, the twin brother, comes up and beats up the second cousin. Jimmy and Jay the Usos are beating up each other. Then uh, Roman and uh, uh, Cody are fighting, and because Cena had come down to help Cody, The Rock comes down. And so The Rock is like going face to face with John Cena. This is like me, like years ago, like, oh my God, I thought I would never see John Cena versus The Rock again. And here they are in 2024 facing off against each other, right? So mm -hmm. there's all these like iconic wrestlers like coming out and everything. And so they fight. The Rock beats up John Cena. The lights go out. There's a the Undertaker Shut appears up. in the middle of the <laughs> ring face to face with the freaking rock and again I'm like what is happening right now the rock and the Undertaker what? is like a decade ago I'm seeing this in 2024 again right so and and that's basically what was happening right there was all these iconic wrestlers coming out and stuff and so the rock gets beat up by the Undertaker and uh, then yes. <laughs> they roll out and then and and between like each one of these like you heard John Cena's theme song you heard Jey Uso's theme song you heard the Undertaker's theme song the Rock's theme song everybody all of a sudden you hear uh the theme song of the shield which was the group that Roman and Seth were in together 10 mm. years ago wow. right and so you hear this, and so Roman's looking around like, what's going on? Like, who's coming down? And he knew that it was Seth because Seth was like living rent free in his head. Seth comes in the opposite side of the ring with a chair again, similar to what he did 10 years ago, mm -hmm. except that this time he was going to hit the rock with the chair Ooh, to get him off of Cody. Rock. Roman sees it, spears him, beats him down spear. so that Ooh, Seth is like off on the side. He's in pain. And Roman picks up the chair and instead of Roman looking at Cody and beating him so that he could just keep his title, he turns around and he looks at Seth and he's like, this is payback for 10 years ago. And he swats Seth with the chair. Oh, Cody sees this, takes advantage, hits Roman, lays him out. One, two, three. Roman Reigns' historic title reign is over. Ooh. Wow. All right. <laughs> and so here's... Like, I, I, if you've stuck around this far, bless you for sticking around this far, because the, here's the comparison to Endgame. This story was building up years and years and years in the making. The original betrayal of the S.H.I.E.L.D. 10 years ago played into the story and the mind games that started six months ago. Excuse me, when Seth injected himself into this Cody Roman storyline. When... Um, in the entire story, Roman was basically Thanos, right? Mm -hmm. Cody was Captain America. And in the story, the way that I interpreted the whole thing, Seth Rollins was Iron Man, right? And it was it, the way that it was set up was when Cody was getting beat down and beat down. When you heard the first theme song hit, when like Cena came out to help, it was basically that, hey, Cap, to your left moment. Because ah. the first guy came down to help because the bloodline always was outnumbering everyone. And so now you have these iconic characters, John Cena, The Undertaker, The Rock, like everybody jumping into this crazy match right mm -hmm. like compounding this like insane scene this battle scene and to have seth rollins at the end basically uh 
lose his title, sacrifice himself, his body, to try to take down the bloodline, sacrifice himself through the chair shot for Cody to get the win, was the moment that he said, no, I am Iron Man. Yep, that's what it sounds like. And Cody won. And all of a sudden, all the wrestlers come out. It's like they started reappearing after the blip. All the wrestlers that Roman had beaten in the last four years all started coming out to celebrate with Cody. It was a crazy moment. It was such a Marvel moment. The storytelling, I can't... It was amazing. Mm. It's been the first time that I've been invested in a storyline like this Mm -hmm. ever. I've loved other storylines and I've, I've loved what they've done, but this one was so cinematic for the last six months. All the interactions, the production value, everything was so MCU that even if you're not a wrestling fan, if they put together like a documentary with like all the pieces together, it's a movie you can watch on IMAX. Mm-hmm. It was amazing. By the way, I'm and not for crying. all of you that stuck around, <laughs> I was, I was. <laughs> for all of you that stuck around, thank you for indulging me in that. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's all I wanted. So to we say. got we I got Solo. Is that what I said? Cena, yeah, that's a cousin. Yeah. The Rock. The uh-huh. Roman Reigns. Yeah. Uh-huh. Some cousins and brothers. Yes. Yes. Jimmy, Jay, Cody. Yeah. Undertaker. Yeah. Whoever Seth. That's Seth freaking Rollins. Sammy. Yes. Sammy Zayn, yes. I think that's all the ones I got. You forgot Undertaker. No, it's right there. No, Undertaker. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. You said it, you said it. That's right. Yeah. Rock beats Cena. Undertaker beats Rock. Theme song. Chair. <laughs> Yep. Spear, SWAT, Spear. Yep. injected. These are all the notes I wrote. That's that. I mean, you they're accurate. A DQ oh my production. That's accurate. There's. That's accurate. Wow, uh-huh. dude. Accurate. <laughs> Shield. WrestleMania. Next time, next time I'll just have you write down the notes and we'll give the cliff notes. Cody version. get help from Seth. Yes. Bloodline something. How did the you Rock take that many notes? Roman I, was, I was trying to speak so quickly Uncle, to get past it all. Um, Tom Solo to sold you See, I couldn't to do Ari that. Emanuel, I, I had to like just TKO pay attention. Holdings. <laughs> too much. The Rock is a jerk. Oh uh, yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's other words that I could use to describe the Rock's character right now, but this uh, yeah, PG that's podcast. So, yeah, but yeah. you know what? It seems starts uh, with an A. It seemed to uh, get the, the point end. across and make you all excited about it. So I guess it was all uh, for the best, right? Trust me. There <laughs> there have not been many things in the last several years that have brought me as much joy. As I don't know if I've heard your voice be that excited telling a story. Yeah. Uh, I'm telling you, there haven't time. been many things <laughs> in years that have brought me that much joy. The, the last uh, time was when your last child was born. You were this yes. excited. <laughs> Maybe. Or maybe there's a new churro flavor <laughs> maybe. in twenty eighteen. Who knows? No, the last time I was this <laughs> the last time I was this excited was when the Hatbox Ghost got added to the mansion. Oh yeah, that was exciting. Yeah. This excited. As far as like crying. telling the story and everything, hey. dude, I'm telling you. Tell me about that. That'll be in one I more was month. Boo hooing. Hatbox Ghost Day? Yup. May night. Nice. Oh, this time we won't forget. Last yes. year we totally <laughs> forgot. Yeah. I'll set a reminder so we can post right? something. So. Set your clocks. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, again, thank you so much for indulging me, everyone that's listening. Um, I know that's not what you showed up to listen to, but it was just so good. The writing, it. I've always gotten a lot of crap for being a wrestling fan throughout my life because it's fake. Don't you know it's fake? Yes, so I it's know. It's pre-written, okay? <laughs> but just you like you TV would watch show, a movie. Like, yeah, like, yeah, same like, thing. Much like a TV show, a play, a movie. It's a, a thing that's pre-written for you to enjoy. You, this just happens you, to be yeah. live every week. Game of Thrones. Yes. Like, there you go. Yeah. It's so, fine. Like what anyway. you like, man. It's for fine. Real. For real. Did The Rock do a lot of that eyebrow stuff? Dude, eyebrow stuff and a lot of, like, uh, number ones with his hands, but not with the pointer finger. Ah. Um... 
He, he doesn't I'm care about you, his family he's friends, his, uh, personality no. right now. No. He That's okay. drops so many F-bombs. In the last three weeks, that's been his favorite word on mm. camera. What? And the, Stirring the, up the, controversy. Yeah. Like, he's been going on TikTok and Instagram, like, talking smack for 20 minutes about Cody and the Cody crybabies and making him bleed and taking his blood to his mama. I was like, wow, this and is while All while insane. drinking uh, Terramana. Terramana. I'm tequila. sure he was drunk, yeah. Yeah. With his new skincare line. What's it called? Have you seen what? that one? He's got, like, a new skincare line, yeah. News my, to my me. Buddy, let me see. See, rock, I, I like the rock, but uh, I wouldn't buy skincare from him. It Papa is Tui? called Papa Tui. Yep. That is what it's called. It's called Papa Tui. Papa Tui. Yeah. You know what? I saw him do a skit with uh, Guillermo from the Jimmy Kimmel show where they Aww. were like at a spa together, like massaging each other and <laughs> like I cucumbers in the eyes and everything. <laughs> I oh, like yeah. Guillermo the best. too. <laughs> the best. All right, uh, we should move on. That was a really long WrestleMania explanation. Yay, Wrestle Thank you for the hanging Mania. in there again. So, what else are we talking about today? Let's talk about the BDX spots at Galaxy's Edge. Boop, beep, boop, robot, boop, boop, robot, boop, boop, robot, 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 robot. So uh, those were play tested a while back, yeah. Mm -hmm. They were play tested a while back, and I actually have a video. That Larry took in the park. Larry he yeah. got a chance so to see so. them live. Let's uh, take a look at this video. These are cute, man. They are like adorable. Little, little ducky Can I bots. Can go hug one? <laughs> you know, so, the first... Wow, the movement. Yeah. The first time I saw them, I could have swore the eyes were like connect. <laughs> How cute! Like the spacing I thought so and too. stuff, but they got to be their own proprietary thing. They remind me so much of like baby Johnny Fives. Yeah. But they're so like expressive and like mm -hmm. they have like such a like big movement for yeah. being so right. small. It's the, that's cool. Yeah, what I really like about them too is that they they're so much more nimble and mm -hmm. they're they're so much better at keeping the balance mm -hmm. than other ones that they've put out recently. Yeah. yeah. I, I remember last year at South by Southwest when they did the like the skating robot? Like mm -hmm. the it kind of looked like a Judy Hopps version oh, and yes. they had yep. like so it did like a somersault and all that stuff. But even walking out, it was really rigid. It was yeah. like much more robotic and it pulled off the moves and everything. But these are, are so fluid. much more organic and yeah. fluid. Exactly. Mm -hmm. They just look so good moving around. There is just so many advancements <laughs> at Imagineering. I, it's like, this is what excites me about the parks. Mm -hmm. Imagineering. Um, and it's funny too because uh, I, I know I mentioned this on our uh, text chat, but Imagineering has a new like series on YouTube. Mm. It's called, we call it Imagineering. So if you're not following the Imagineering channel on YouTube, just search for Walt Disney Imagineering. And there's, there's one episode so far. Uh, the trailer, it's actually here. Let me bring up the trailer. Today, I'm walking the halls of Walt Disney Imagineering to show you things that no one else has gotten to see. How do the two of you work together to make this masterpiece? Well, we battle. <laughs> <laughs> Walt Disney Imagineering first started designing, planning, and building Disneyland. Let me show you a little bit. It's not completed yet, but this inspired all the great audio animatronic attractions around the world. We start at the story. Story is key. Walt Disney still inspires us to this day. We're using new technology to bring characters to life. A lot of work beyond just the 3D animation. We're always looking for that new angle that's going to engage our guests. And for the first time, we get to debut one of those very important characters. The guests are just going to love it. That's what makes it all worthwhile. We end up with a beautiful dance. I started watching it, mm -hmm. and 
it it's not very long into the episode where you notice or you might notice something in the background that I think you'll appreciate. There's really no secret so about our approach. Out. I should put we the volume down forward. before we get a copyright strike. I'm yeah, sure that for the idea. trailer, we're going to get one anyway. But once this intro happens, Josh DeMauro is going to come on screen. Uh-huh. Are we going to be like that Leo like meme where he's like, oh! We should. <laughs> is that what it, is that what's going on, what I'm going to see? Because I haven't watched this yet. Uh, You'll see. Josh D. Amaro. Teeth. D Amaro. D apostrophe Mar And so look, the, the BDX bots are in this, and we're already seeing them in the park. Yeah. Yay. We saw Grogu back there. Yeah, the magnifying Lincoln. glass. <laughs> Audio animatronics, episode one. Hi, everyone. I'm Josh. Today, I'm in one of my favorite places in the world, Walt Disney Imagineering. You know, there's Yuck! So much history. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me pause. There's something really special that's being worked on in this. The Imagineer in the back is working on it. Some arm. Right? Is that what we're looking mm -hmm. at? An arm. The arm is actually in front here. Magic here. Let me rewind a little bit. I was so distracted mm -hmm. by everything else. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I know. Trust me. Hi everyone. I'm Josh. You see what she's working on Today back there? One of my it looks like an or arm. What's I know, but what's behind what she's working on back there? Thing. No, 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 no. That's Candleman. Uh -huh. She's not working on Candleman, no, though. She's I, I, I know what she's working on. I know. I know. I sorry. Like, I got excited. Oh, okay. I'm like see? trying to move my head so I can see. But see? See? Look at that. Look at but what about trust so heads? Cool. So much magic. It's so cool. It's so magic. But what about Mayor's teeth? His teeth? Everybody knows you have to work on, on his teeth. And Captain <gasps> Rex. Oh. Yay. And Zazu. This is defunct at animatronics. Except these. Well, the, yeah. No. Oh, they're so cute. Okay. All right, we'll see you later. Can we get we excited got? about the Candleman back there, though? Candleman! Yeah. Mandel can. Tiki I bird. I love this. Yeah, whatever. Blah, 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 blah. Let's look at a, a skeletal Ooh. Mr. Potato Head. Oh, I love right? the <laughs> pieces like that. Like, that's cool. I am not even listening to what he's saying. I'm just looking Parts at everything. Bins. Trust me, you're going to want to watch this multiple times because I feel like every time... Okay, look, look, look. Look at the head up here. Yeah. Up here. I saw that already. Uh -huh. ah, you're, at... you're late to the thing, but what about parts bins? I wonder what kind of parts are in there. Who knows? Hey, look, little squirt. There's so much eye candy. Hey, look, I, know the head. I know the head. I know the head. Challenged us to stay curious, to dream big, and to always be thinking. Blah, blah, blah. Going. I'm Josh tomorrow. Show more. Yay. Yay. Destinations around the globe. So we're inviting you inside cat. behind the curtain so that you Little can cat. See bunny. That's Bugs Bunny. <laughs> That's not Bugs Bunny. <laughs> I don't Madonna's know. face for some reason. I don't know who it's <laughs> that's Cher. Yeah. Or Cher is that Cher? <laughs> Alright, so anyway, Matthew Nelson takes you around Imagineering. Mm -hmm. It's I definitely watch this. It is a fantastic video. I can't wait for there to be more of these. Uh, but it took me multiple watches because every time you you watch it i i couldn't pay attention at times because mm -hmm. i was like lurking around trying mm -hmm. to see what i could like, find on say? the walls or on the <laughs> exactly yep. and so i found myself going back to it and to the point where i decided not to do that anymore watch it all the way through try to listen and then go back and watch <laughs> again to see what else i could find and then i was like andrew like Arrow, 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 arrow. Next, next, like one second. Frame, frame, frame. I like going frame by frame. Period, 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 period. Comma, 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 comma. Period, yeah. period, period, period. Uh, but it's fantastic. Definitely uh, recommend watching it. It's on the Walt Disney Imagineering YouTube channel. Was this uh, episode the one where they're they're covering the Tiana stuff? Yes, they okay. do talk about it. They show the animatronic. The animatronic is amazing. We've already kind of seen some of it because we've seen clips on Instagram and on TikTok. Well, we haven't talked reveal. about that really, have we? We have no. not. 
We haven't. We have not. Um, I can actually fast forward to it so we could see a little bit about it and we can talk about it. But I mean, there's here. lots of animatronics that they that they revealed even in the just the clips. It looks great. Yeah. I know. <laughs> and it's funny, too, because um, I know that uh, last week they did a video where one of the Imagineers was revealing the additional characters that mm -hmm. are going to be part of Tiana's Bayou Adventure. But here, let me bring this back on screen. Yep. And here's the, I think we saw a clip of the Tiana, Tiana animatronic. Yeah, the Tiana yeah. one we've seen. Yeah. And he's dancing. That's a nice dancey man. He's like, look at dancing. It's just so good. They're so fluid. Oh, scary. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's cute. How do you go about creating something as large as Lewis? He is one of the largest and most dynamic figures. Wait, so is he larger than Ursula? I don't think. I don't think he's. Oh, no, no, no. That no. in scale, but they said largest and most animated or whatever. Or yeah. Whatever. He's got lots the, of movement. Yeah, as far as the intricacies of his movement, I think he's much more complex. Oh, yeah. They keep showing the hidden Mickey. Got it. I yeah. Know. <laughs> like we see it. <laughs> Just in case. But it also keeps support of the costume wow. unless the costume ride over that because all of these are animated. It's all part of his functionality. John. Past, Boring. Pneumatic, uh, I forgot Gertie. No, I don't know what that dinosaur's name is. The walk around one. Lucky. Lucky. I think it's Lucky. Look at how animated the face is. Yeah, even just without the like the fabric, all the all the skin and everything on it. Yeah. Using what new technologies we have. I mean, we're able to do a lifelike look. That's the Disney difference. I love that. Wow. I hope that they've also spent some time. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> I hope they've also spent some time um, as they've developed Lewis thinking about some of the like the skin issues that they've had with like Ursula and, and mm -hmm. Ariel and stuff on other attractions and applied what they've learned to like this animatronic or to Tiana's animatronic for instance because yeah. there's so much more movement than we've mm -hmm. seen in other animatronics that you have to imagine that the maintenance on these is is going to be a little more intense than it's been for others, right? Unless there's some kind of new material that they've developed that withstands the movements much yeah. more than they have in the past. Well, yeah, the in the one that we were looking at before, uh, or the one with the costume on, it looks like it's some sort of like fabric, like like fabric fabric, as opposed to like like where like human based animatronics have like a latex or like mm -hmm. a, a rubber or whatever like skin like yeah. a, like the like lewis looks like it's like fabric which like i think ursula is as well as like fabric um so i wonder if that like helps it uh see there's the one in the back also that one said lewis 5dl so i wonder if there are five lewis animatronics in the disneyland one or it's just like station five or something. I'm just I'm looking at all the different signs and stuff that are around. Look at the beaver. <laughs> so cute. Let me let me rewind just for a second here. Look at look in the background. We saw the beaver. Mm -hmm. If you're watching this video for the first time, I I didn't go far enough. Which you are going to see on this is a character. He's a Let's very see. jolly character. We want to make him appear as happy as possible. And did I go back far enough? Probably not. They'll no. probably show a white shot. It's fine. Again. There, oh, it there is. he is. Okay. Mm -hmm. Who's this? I know. Mel, do you want to take a guess? Because I'm sure Andrew knows by now. It's... But do you know who this is back here? I don't, but I'm going to guess it's his little brother. Yes, little brother. Good guess. That's for your little brother. Also, the symbol stand has a hidden Mickey on it. Uh, yeah. There you go, right there. Oh, so the, oh the, cute. Yeah, right here. Tiny, tiny. The speculation was like, is that uh, Tiana and Naveen's child? Is that their son? No. It's like, no. No. He's but he's at the end the of the movie. He's like, I'm six and a half. Yeah. From our digital profile. <laughs> Seeing how it's going to translate onto the figure. This is Lewis's animation. But this is like, it's really cool to like get to see like this like actual like programming details and like how things have changed from like having the like big mechanic thing that you wear to make the mm -hmm. animatronic move into like just a software base. 
with um so I, it's got to be still a pain in the butt to do like okay i wonder how many of these you just like you do this this motor this motor then this motor and hopefully they all work together at the same time yeah. Just but seeing yeah, all that's, the lines yeah. is like, uh, that's yeah. a lot. So that looks like fabric to me, like it some does sort of like fabric. fabric, yeah. And I wonder, you know, I think what I'm most worried about is, I mean, I guess, you know, we just don't want this to be another Splash Mountain where everything's broken all of the time. Yes. Yeah. So hopefully the, that they're going to waterproof them and stuff. The fabric does, um, it, it is worrisome, obviously, because it's really humid in there. Yeah. You know, so the last thing you need is for it to get all swampy under, like, Lewis's skeletal structure. Yeah. But, you know so what, maybe it's We're giving plastic. away the entire episode. Maybe it's we plastic fabric, I don't know. But yeah. those animatronics look cool. I know in one of the, the Instagram posts, uh, they show, we get to see a couple more of the animals. There was a Lottie. Uh, mm -hmm. animatronic. I think a different yeah. Tiana animatronic. Um, it's, I'm telling you, the, the Walt Disney Imagineering has been doing a really great job over the last year of sharing a lot of the accomplishments and the advancements through social media. And I feel like this is just kind of the evolution of what they've been doing on social media. Mm -hmm. I think they, it's, it's so funny to me that even like a decade ago, it was so difficult and so secretive to figure out what was happening in there. And unless you kind of knew somebody that knew somebody or, you know, you were lucky enough to win some kind of contest to tour Imagineering or D23 did a crazy thing where you got a chance to tour the studios and D23, like all that stuff, or read a book or yeah. went to D23 to hear stories. This was unheard of. And now they're like, how right? about just a whole series where we just take you in and yeah. show you all the stuff? Like the fact that we got things like the Imagineering story on Disney Plus, where they talk about Imagineering and they show us inside, and then we are getting this. We got the social media stuff. It's it's refreshing to see that Disney understands that the magic of the parks for many people is the park itself right they want to see the magic as it's presented but it looks like they finally understand that the magic to other people is what goes into creating the magic of the park and the fact that we're getting these behind the scenes things at d23 in these limited series in these clips on social media that's amazing because imagine how many children or how many people are watching this and they're like i want to be like there was always people that wanted to do that but they didn't necessarily know they couldn't figure out a path and now, obviously, that information is much more readily available. But if you don't have all of the additional resources, somebody like a kid can watch this on YouTube and be like, oh, there's a lot of wires and some computers. It looks like some modeling software or something. And you actually get an idea of where your path can begin finally. Right. Which is something that wasn't very well known to people. Like one of the biggest questions I feel Imagineers always got, or maybe still get to this day is how do I become an Imagineer? What should I study? Mm -hmm. What do I need to go into in order to become an Imagineer? And I'm going to tell you the truth. Everything that I know about Imagineering is anything that you are passionate about. There is no path to Imagineering. Imagineering is all about what you're passionate about and what you are extremely good at doing. Mm -hmm. If you are good at robotics, there's a place for you at Imagineering. If you are good at making clothing, there's a place for you at Imagineering. If you can model, if you can animate, there's a place for you at Imagineering. If you can design, if you can paint, if you can create amazing layouts, if you can come up with stories, there's a place for you at Imagineering. Imagineering isn't about one set of disciplines. It's a vast ocean of disciplines. 
like to the point where there are people that concentrate on making rocks look like rocks Mm -hmm. in the parks okay so if you've ever wondered what is the path to imagineering the answer is simple anything that you are passionate about is your path to imagineering (laughs) yeah yep right pretty much so ah all right before we move on i do want to take a moment to thank a very special group of people so can we do that for yeah, let's take a little it. bit of break. Of course. Awesome. Let's take a little bit of break and let's thank a very special group of people known as the FGP Squad, our podcast, Fairy Godparents, because it's their support via Patreon that help make these episodes of Podcasters possible. For more information on how you can become part of the FGP Squad family, we invite you to go to podcasters.com slash FGP. There you will find a list of some of our top contributors, a little information on what the FGP Squad is all about, a uh, link to our Patreon, and more. But if you have any additional questions or just uh, want to reach out to us, feel free to. We'll be happy to answer any questions that you might have. You can reach out to us over on uh, Instagram, Facebook, on YouTube, uh, or we'd love for you to join us on Discord, podcasters.com slash links. You'll find a link there for it. But being a part of the FGB Squad family gets you some additional perks like access to additional content that we've uploaded to Patreon, discount codes for new Podcasters gear whenever we release that stuff, random giveaways, a special section of Discord, uh, and more. So again, any questions that you might have, please feel free to reach out. We'll be happy to answer any questions. But to all of the members of the FGP squad, we just want to send a huge thank you for your continued support. All righty. Let's see. What else do we have? Oh, right. The, the news that's been floating around everywhere, which started off as a rumor. Mm-hmm. And this is funny because... Uh, when I first caught wind of this rumor, it was reported by a website that I tend not to put a lot behind right. when they say something because right. they're very clickbaity, you know? Yeah. And usually, well, I mean, we've talked about this before. Usually we wait for Disney to make an announcement about stuff like this. However, there is. <laughs> one source out there that seems to be well connected and gets a lot of this stuff right all the time and that creator or that reporter is scott gustin Mm -hmm. and so the the news that we were hearing was that the das system the disability access service system at Disney uh, originally I heard it was just going to change at Walt Disney World Mm -hmm. and then another news source reported that it was possibly going to be happening at Disneyland and I thought uh, somebody must have just heard something thought it was both parks when they heard Disney and then it just kind of grew into this thing and then Scott Gustin reported and that's when we realized oh Disney hasn't officially said anything but if Scott is saying that it is yeah it's it's kind of true at this point, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, for those who are not aware of the DAS system, it's essentially a pass that you could get at Disney parks. Uh, you used to be able to go into like uh, like uh, uh, the Main Street USA. You can talk to a cast member and you would tell them that you had some kind of special need and it was a pass that would allow you to uh, have some accommodations, you know, so that you didn't have to stand in line throughout the entire day. Uh, They would kind of like move you to the side and just you would wait on the side instead of having to stand there. So there were additional accommodations for people with disabilities in order for their experience to be a lot better when visiting the parks. And the thing about the DAS system is that over the years, it has been abused by a lot of people. And this isn't anything new. Like this is like 10, 15 years ago, I know people that were saying had things wrong with them in order to use this system because somebody told them it was a hack to not stand in line very long or Mm -hmm. whatever the case was, right? Mm -hmm. 
And as far as I knew, there there was some there was some policing of it, but not to the extent that it looks like it's going to be policed now by Disney. Uh, Andrew, do you want to talk a little bit about what is uh, what we're learning so far about what's happening with it? Yeah. So, like you said, it, uh, it, this seems to be to combat um, people taking advantage of the program for people that don't actually need it. Um, they there is uh, some information here. Um, I don't have it exact. I don't know exactly where it is, but it was uh, somewhere they said they saw uh, in the last like five years or something the um, requests for DAS passes have gone up fivefold um, in that time, which is a lot. Mm -hmm. And they are, I'm assuming, attributing that to people that are using it and abusing the system. Um, but the changes uh, will be effective, uh, I believe, starting in May or June. Um, let's see. Uh, effective May 20th at Walt Disney World and June 18th at Disneyland. Um, yeah. So uh, this is for... Um, folks that um need uh it, it's not necessarily for people that are like in a wheelchair because a wheelchair is kind of you just go where the wheelchair line is this is for for people that may have um disabilities or different differing abilities of being able to stand in line for a long amount of time or or dealing with with confined spaces etc cetera, etc cetera. so there's there's a whole different host of 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 things that that would qualify you to get this pass to be able to basically either skip the line or wait in a different area until your time becomes available etc cetera, etc cetera. so it's just it's just a a a day a thing to help people with with differing abilities to be able to enjoy the park um yeah. uh the changes uh seem to be there will be it says notable changes da uh, das advanced pre-arrival attraction selections will no longer be a default offering to every das guest so it seems to be on a there'll be like a, a per need per guest basis yeah. current das guests will need to reapply um, DAS party size max is four, except for families. There's exceptions. Um, and DAS enrollment eligibility increases from 60 to 120 days. Yeah. Um, it looks like they, Disney will be working with Inspire Health Alliance's health professionals to help cast members when necessary to determine a guest DAS eligibility. Uh, Ga DAS is, uh, this quote is, DAS is for guests who, due to a de developmental disability like autism or similar, are unable to wait in line for a long period of time. Um, and so what you would do is you would, it, it's it's similar to uh, getting, I, th I think it's a similar program, it's just they're using different terms, they're just kind of updating their terms and working with this inspire health uh yeah. alliance so i i did find the updated website for das yes on and both walt on, disney world and disneyland they have updated yeah and so i'm looking at it right now and it looks like you will have to obviously go through inspire health to mm -hmm. get the das pass in be between april 9th and june 17th before it becomes official and and it turns over you can do a virtual meeting with somebody at the resort to determine whether or not you are eligible to get it. Uh, on site, the on site accessibility services window will still be available. You can go to guest relations mm -hmm. until the 17th of June. And uh, starting on the 18th, like you said, that's when things will turn over and you have to go through Inspire uh, Health Alliance to get everything. I'm, you know, the. The turnover 
uh, or turning this over to an outside vendor, it, uh, I'll be honest, it kind of worries me, right? Because the way that it's laid out and the, the way that the program was set up to be used is, so they, you, you talked a little bit about how in the last, I think the quote that I remember seeing, it, this was also on, on Scott's um, Twitter account, X account, whatever we're calling it, um, the artist formerly known as Twitter. Uh, he tweeted that I think in the last five years, the DAS request had tripled, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, some number like that, yes. Yeah, uh, if I'm remembering correctly, I think that's what he posted. And what worries me is that in the last four years, we've gone through a global disabling event, mm -hmm. right? Where there are a lot more people that are disabled because of long COVID through different severities, right? Correct. Some mm -hmm. to the point where they have certain symptoms to where some people can't leave their bed or are hospitalized because they got COVID at some point and they're trying to get past it, you know? And I remember when when the pandemic first began, everything we knew about what COVID did to our bodies was originally a lot of respiratory issues, right? Like mm -hmm. we thought that it was just the cough, shortness of breath, muscle aches, you know, loss of smell and taste and stuff like that. And uh, the brain fog was all associated with COVID at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And the more that we learned about it over time, we found people were developing this long COVID thing. And more importantly, the virus itself kept mutating and spawning off with other symptoms, you know, that weren't part of that initial wave of getting COVID. So over time, the symptoms that people experience with long COVID now are like people can have POTS, which is uh, when your heart rate increases very quickly after like you you move or something, or it just goes from like, I don't know, your sitting rate is like 75 and it shoots up to like 140 all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. um, you have difficulty thinking, you know, the whole brain fog thing, you can't concentrate. There's early onset dementia now that's associated with uh, uh, decreased blood flow to the brain. Uh, because it's a vascular disease, it causes blood clots, which causes that uh, blood flow issue. Uh, it's spawning type 2 diabetes in children, sleep issues, migraines, vertigo, uh, that weird like pins and needles feeling on your body because you don't have sufficient blood flow. Uh, the list goes on and on, right? Digestive system like issues, all you name it. I think right now there's over like 200 symptoms and it just depends on the person and what the person may have had wrong and what like COVID attacked in their body, right? So the problem with this is that people suffering from long COVID are having a really hard time getting it diagnosed. Mm -hmm. And because they're having a really hard time getting diagnosed with it, getting a DAS pass is almost going to be impossible for them because DAS is going to require you to be diagnosed with something in order to get it if you're going through Inspire Health Alliance, right? Mm -hmm. And it's not like when you think about the number of people that are suffering from something like this, it's no, no wonder that Disney says that it's five times larger than it was or three times more than it was five years ago. Like five years ago was right before the pandemic began, right? So it makes sense that since then, more people have issues and more people are requesting it. Gr granted, social media may also have something to do with this because we're all aware of the accounts that are chasing clout Yes. that are always telling you the Disneyland secrets and the things to get away. And, you know, mm. there's all those videos where, like, if you wear a shirt that's inappropriate, Disney will give you a voucher for a shirt. Yeah. And what was once something special gets ruined because of things like this, 
right? Mm -hmm. So at some point, somebody may have posted a video or something where they said, hey, if you pretend that you have something wrong or say that you have this and this, you can get a pass to skip the line or you can get a pass to this and this. Completely possible. However, we also know that roughly three in 10 people are reporting having long COVID or they've reported having long COVID at some point. And yep. roughly one in 10 people are reporting having long COVID right now. There's an estimated 17 million adults with long COVID right now in the US. 79% of them say that they have activity limitations. 25% report that it affects their activities to a point where they can't even get out of bed. Mm -hmm. Right. So on on top of the fact that this goes undiagnosed, there's already other diseases that are out there that are considered like hidden disabilities. Right. Like when you yeah. think of mental health conditions, chronic pain, chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, Cron uh, Crohn's disease, um, lupus, like all of these diseases don't necessarily have a face, right? Mm. They don't look the same on everybody. Every, like people that have them suffer from these things in much different ways than somebody else does. But you can't dismiss what that person is feeling while they are suffering from it. Like two people could have the exact same thing wrong with them, but the severity of how they feel it can be two totally different levels. Totally. And so if you have one of these diseases now, including long COVID and you can't prove to Alliance Health that you have it because you don't have a diagnosis or your doctor keeps giving you a runaround or you can't like they don't know how to diagnose it because all your labs look great. We don't know what's wrong with you, which is a story that many people are far too familiar with, especially over these last two years. It it makes going to the park even more difficult. The this these changes i understand are going to help disney mitigate the amount of people that abuse it but at the same time i feel like it's really going to hurt the amount of people that have the ability to go to the park with these accommodations in place now i'm i'm just really interested in are we submitting paperwork to them or I don't so know. here's here's I... here's where where a lot of this I think we will learn in when people try and use this because yeah. the the here's according to the Disneyland website in the how it works section I will just okay. read it verbatim so so we can you know go from there so step one register there are two ways for guests to have a conversation with a cast member to determine eligibility for DAS. One, live video chat, or two, on-site at an accessibility oh. services window. Step two, request a return time. After you've registered and entered the theme park, you can request a first return time. Step three, enjoy the park, blah, 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 blah. Um, so there's... What it looks like is there's a pre-arrival, and I think this has existed in some form already, this pre-arrival thing, and I think they're just kind of adjusting some language. I, I don't know, I've not looked at this website prior to today, so I don't know what the exact terms were um, prior to this, but from what I can tell, there's no, like, it doesn't say anywhere in here about needing you know the the health thing says when cast members need assistance like it's basically like if they have somebody that's trying to scam them they'll probably try they'll bring it video chat in with somebody from this health thing and uh uh you know ask some more questions um again i don't i don't have firsthand experience with this so i don't know what has happened prior and what's going to happen now but 
it I, I'm I'm hoping for the best. I'm hoping that yeah. people that actually need this, if they can, you know, have a conversation with a cast member and be like, hey, like, I suffer from long COVID or I, you know, and so I can't stand for more than 15 minutes or whatever, or I suffer from fibromyalgia and my, you know, back has this pain and I can't stand for more than 10 minutes at a time or what what have you, the, the thing is, um, even if it's not necessarily like a, like I have this piece of paper because I believe that's, I, I don't, again, there's also like lot, like limits to what they can like ask for officially right. because yeah. of, um, HIPAA. HIPAA, laws uh, HIP, HIPAA so. yeah, exactly. So it's all just like an interview process and there, there, I'm sure there will be, uh, certain questions that will guide, you know, with without asking too much information, and you know, you only have to give what you're comfortable with, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, uh, and and HIPAA again, like there's a lot of stuff like HIPAA, like you can divulge anything you want. Um, like they can ask you a question and you can divulge it or not. Like that's. Uh, you know, there, there's all kinds of weird things with HIPAA that I think people understand. It's it's mostly to protect your doctor from telling people stuff, <laughs> right? From uh, yeah, your medical stuff. Yeah. And to protect without, the patient's privacy. It's basically protect your privacy. So if you want to divulge yeah. your stuff, you're more than welcome to. <laughs> like, right. yeah. um, but again, so I, I don't know... And the the website is very vague when very it comes vague. to these these terms and and who you know it says that the wording that they use um, it seem you know it says for guests due to a developmental disability like autism or similar is the the wording that they use for this particular service and now. I don't know if that wording was there prior to this. If it wasn't, except you know, there there's all kinds of things that I need to like open up the Wayback Machine and look at it from yesterday, <laughs> and yeah. and see what what the differences are um, for this website and the wording, uh, so so we can compare. But I, I'm I'm trying to be hopeful that the the cast members who are actually going to be the ones determining this will understand the differing abilities of all kinds of people you know of of yeah. all kinds of ability and all kinds of things not just you know you know kids with autism or similar or people in general with autism or similar but there's there's also other like you said Hazen other disabilities and differing abilities that will limit somebody's ability to to stand in a long line or be around a bunch of people for a long you know in a close thing and etc cetera, etc cetera. so um here's yeah. hoping for the best um oh, that's all we can do right <laughs> we could but for me okay so I've, I've spoken out loud, you know, I've talked about it. I do have a mental illness. I could tell you right now, the one line that kind of stuck out with me was um, you like having to talk to someone mm -hmm. that right there. I already got anxiety just thinking about it because you could be thinking like, you know, the rejection that that's the yeah. hardest part. And the, the everything is so vague. It's like, well, wait a minute. Who's to say, like, if we're explaining to them and they don't think it's deemable, I mean, there's yeah. cases where people have it really, really bad. Um, and let's say the next person behind me doesn't have anything. I, we're just going to say, like, they're going to try to get whatever they can. They're a they good can. actor. Yes. Yeah. So who's to say, like, that's the part where I'm kind of like, how are they going to determine if you could get one or if they do, because they may be a better actor. So I, that's why I'm so, um, I'm concerned about this. I'm interested. And in, yeah, I, I, I do think that they're going in the right direction with talking to health professionals. Um, I, 
I guess we're going to see how it goes. But that's to I, me I'm, was like yeah. the one thing I'm like, wait. So we'll find out in May and June when yeah. when when this stuff starts going into effect. And hopefully that these the health professionals that they are talking to are uh, brushed up on all health care and all, you know, things that are going on because you know some doctors and stuff they're like oh yeah i stopped learning about stuff in 2015 who cares about anything after after yeah. the eisenhower administration <laughs> like, I, <don't... laughs> I mean i'm glad you're bringing that up though because it is you know knowing knowing what people go through and experiencing what people go through when trying to alleviate long COVID symptoms or trying to find solutions to things that are wrong, that are difficult to diagnose, right? Not having that uncertainty when you're speaking to a cast member. One of the concerns that also comes up for me is <clears throat> the blatant denial of what people with long COVID are going through right now. And the idea that COVID is just the flu, right? The fact that some people got COVID and were able to get over it better than others were and, you know, continue to live their life in a very similar manner that they did before isn't everyone's experience, right? And so, the fact that there are so many people that just blatantly deny it or think it's some conspiracy or make fun of it is is one of the things that worries me when it comes to how this is going to be handled especially like i said if you don't have any kind of official diagnosis for something like that and the ironic part is that uh alliance health or inspire health alliance uh was the same company that helped disney with the COVID protocols when mm -hmm. the pandemic was at okay. its height, right? So they have some experience with it. How they're going to treat that, I don't know. Now, we could wait until June when all of this kicks in. But if this is supposed to emulate what's already in place at Universal, I want to put the question out to people. If you've gone to Universal or know somebody that's gone to Universal and has had to access this type of service there and you've had to go through the process of getting it, uh, I would love to hear what that experience was like. If you can share that, send us a message. Uh, we don't have to share your name or any details, but if, if you could share what the experience was like, it would give us an idea of what we could be seeing coming to Disneyland and Walt Disney World in a couple of months. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it, it's a really difficult thing for us to predict. You know, uh, I've never had to use the DAS Pass before, but I can tell you that some of the limitations that I had... Uh, over the course of the last couple of years, the times that I've gone to the park, I didn't get a DAS Pass, but I damn sure de get, did get Genie Plus. Mm -hmm. You know, I paid the extra 20 bucks or whatever per attraction so that I didn't have to stand in line as long as I, I normally would have been able to hold off, you know, doing it. Uh, entire Disney marathon days, not the same. I can't hang, you know, just can't do it right now. So... It's it's going to be interesting to see how this is handled, how it evolves and how it changes, because it is going to to make the park going experience a little more difficult for people that are already having a difficult time and choose to go to the parks. Yeah. So. But on the bright Just side. Just here. I was like, we're ending like really low. On the bright side, bad people are not going to step into the parks anymore. Oh, yeah. Yay. 100%. I mean, that's, I mean, <laughs> I want to say that that's true 100%. Yeah. But I know. it happens anyway, yeah. right? But it's... yeah, just with everything, when they change something, there's going to be hiccups. There's going to be bumps in the road. And yeah. hopefully they are at least on a path to creating something that is 
uh, equitable and fair and and works for the people that it needs to. That's all we yeah. can hope for. Hopefully that is what they're striving for and what this system will eventually accomplish. Yeah. Here, here. Yep. That couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> so. All right. Um, anything else before we wrap up so. this conversation? I don't think so. I think you want to go to bed. Yeah, <laughs> I do too. <laughs> I do too. Hey, we have a new Quizneyland up. It was up uh, a little late. I got um, uh, weird allergies in my voice. I sounded like uh, James Earl Jones for a couple days, so I Aww. had to. I didn't record. But I, <laughs> I would have loved it because you know that Friends episode where Phoebe's all like, "I got a cold," and she's singing like singing "Smelly Cat," mm, and it yeah. sounds like you know it was basically that. Yeah. You basically could have recorded Smelly Cat and done Quizneyland, and it would have been like, wow, Andrew. I should have. You know, I was, it was funny because I was at, you know, it was mostly just like affected my voice more than anything. And I was at work and I was just making noises because it was so different. It wasn't, it was something I wasn't used to. I was going, (laughs) mom. Next time, please send us a video singing I'll, Smelly I'll record, Cat. I'll record Smelly Cat, and I'll do some uh, Simba or whatever. Simba. <laughs> Everything the light touches is your kingdom. Exactly. Yeah. Obi-Wan Back to Cody never Rhodes. told you. No. <laughs> Back to WrestleMania. So. No, 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 no. And here no? comes Andrew with a chair. <laughs> Okay, but get your notepad. I got more stuff to okay. talk about. I'm kidding. Oh, I'm kidding. Oh, so, I know it's been a weird long episode, especially throwing all that wrestling thing in there. I'm telling you, cinema. If you were into wrestling as a kid, I, I, I recommend at least going back and looking at all the highlights that led up to that match. Watch the Cody match. Watch all the excitement that happened. Uh, you don't have to get into it again, but if you've ever loved it before, that is the match to watch. Watch the highlights of the tribal chief as, you know, the longest reigning champion. Uh, There was a documentary about Bray Wyatt. Oof. Talk about boo-hooing. It's, uh, oof. Listen, my brother told me when the documentary came out. (laughs) I know I was wrestling, wrestling, wrestling. wrestling. We're wrestling. wrestling. But, You're like, we're wrapping brother, up anything else, by the way. My I brother said, let me just say, let me just say this. So my brother told me, hey, the, the Bray Wyatt documentary is out. I was like, oh, I got to watch it. I got to watch it. And I didn't watch it the day that it was out. I watched it the next day. And I made the mistake of listening to it as I was working on something. But I was yeah. preparing to go into a meeting in the morning. So I'm watching it before oh. I go to work. And four minutes before I'm supposed to be in an on-camera meeting, I'm like, oh, my God. Well, I'm, I'm, <laughs> oh my god because it was so emotional and it was it wasn't a good experience <laughs> so oh. if you get emotional about stuff like that or if you love bray wyatt don't watch it before you're gonna go do something important because mm, you're gonna, gonna look that. like you're boohooing <laughs> you're gonna, Boo-hoo, you're gonna look cry it. baby podcasters.com slash gear foolish mortal <laughs> <laughs> that's it we're ending it it's time for bed it's late uh until next time Keep dreaming, keep moving forward, and always remember to pass on the magic. Have a fantastic week, everyone. Bye. See ya.